down, 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Are you happy to be here? Yes. Without a resident pastor, I'm sure some people decide not to come. <laughs> but it's all not about any person. Yes. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So whether our man is not here or is here, we came to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's great to serve the Lord because all of us, including myself, at one point we were damaged by the same God who called us from that dark world and gave us light. You see, even as you're standing here, there's some works that is going on in your life. When some building is going on, if you cast your mind around and you look around, in London, for example, anytime there's construction work, they try to build something around it, seal it, and sometimes they'll only release it after it's finished. And that's what Christ is doing to you. Amen. 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 When the finished product comes out, people will see and give testimony to Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Month of stability. And we are trying to run it out today because that will constitute the last Sunday of the month. Month of stability. And we've learned so much about stability. You need to be stable to progress, to become prosperous. And it's the mighty hand of God that sustained us. All these months through the year, it brought us this far and it carried us through. It is time that his own servant that he has chosen, and a word that will come, a life transforming word, a turning around you know, moment in your life. A time of miracle when the word of God is released. And it's actually a man of God who says that anytime the spirit of God meets the word of God, there's ignition and there's fire. I pray today that that will be what exactly will happen into our individual lives. That we won't live here the same, but we'll be living with blessing in our wings. It is time to call on the man of God. And there's no other person that I own, Archbishop, Amen. the head Amen. of the house, who is going to bless us with a word. Sorry, clap on the Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The man himself is here today. Amen. Say Amen. Amen. I have a song that I love. It's about the reward in God's business. Hallelujah. Amen. I used to sing it when we were in Hackney every Sunday. And it goes, Me so ma so no now I'm getting old, so my voice is changing. Okay, now we start. The 
there's a gentleman I need. If he's not here, uh, my heart will bleed today. Where is Brother Dakwa? Oh, God of Israel. He's going to miss a great thing today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we finish, get me a little bit of salt for me. Miracles will happen today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A month of what? Stability. And he says, therefore, my brethren or sisters, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. Yes, Lord. This is where you brought us so far. A month of stability. If we can be firm and not move and stay where we are, there is a reward for your people. Yes. When I finish, my father, it is you who is going to do your own thing. I pray that you touch each and every one here and the eyes of all their understanding be opened Amen. for them to know you more. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, let us just say amen. amen. Shall we have our seats? In these last days, me, when I started the work, there's only one prayer I pray. And Solomon did it. The Lord appeared unto Solomon and asked him, ask me something that you need. Solomon didn't pray for money. He didn't pray for anything. He prayed that God gave me wisdom. There are so many pastors who are fools. God's work is based on wisdom, on nothing. And Solomon said, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that I may be able to look after your people. Praise the Lord. You don't need to pray for money because money is around you. Hallelujah. So today, Pastor took us so many areas, and I'm going to end it up. But we will go through the Old Testament. Stability means something that is unlikely to give way. It is fixed, focused. Steadfastness can also mean your faithfulness, loyalty, persuaded, and convinced. And he said, in order, this is what Pastor went through, I'm just paraphrasing. And in order to have stability, you need to understand, and you need understanding of the word of God. Amen? So that when the word of God comes, you will understand it and walk in it. Two, you need a foundation. Whose foundation are you building on? Is it a man's foundation? When you look at the house or uh, these tall buildings, what is in there is almost half of that, this tall building. It's like a husband getting married. Praise the Lord. The man is the foundation, and the woman and the kids build their life on. Amen? So if the foundation is not good, you see the whole family. Hallelujah. Mrs. Quartin. Today, the Lord is about to do something special in your life. Amen. We're not going to cry anymore. Amen. I speak as the owner of this church. 
and I speak as a prophet. I speak as a pastor and a shepherd. I've been praying. I'm so worried that Brother Adakwa didn't come today. Where does he come from? Do you know his hometown? Today is his day. Praise the Lord. Sister Amma, you get a breath, you get me the salt, please. Okay. And he said, the foundation. Whose foundation are you building your life on? Amen? Amen. There are some pastors deceiving people they want to build people's life on. What they know as leaders, no. It is better to build your life on the word of God and nothing else. Some pastors want to be leaders. Amen? The only leader we have is who? Jesus Christ. And so that's why we call him Christ is the answer. Don't allow any man to deceive you if that thing is not from the book. There are some places they said women should cover their head. Mm. Paul, who said that? Amen? Amen? There are places you go leave your shoe outside. When we finish the church and your shoe is not there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. A believer should be stubborn sometimes. In 1958, I became so stubborn when they asked me to be a regent of our home and then later on become the king. And I said, no, I'll preach the gospel. 1958, I was in P6. Amen? And after secondary school, my big brother, Osaji Fuo Ajimambadu, the Omanian of the Omar traditional area, invited me to the then president of Ghana, Akufuado's father, his office. That is the reason why I love President Akufuado, and I will always pray for him. This man saved my life. When I went there with my mom, the queen mother, my big brother said, the time has come for you to go and take the throne. And I said, Nana, he said, don't call me Nana, I'm your brother. I said, I will never sit on that throne. And he said, what are you going to do? And I said, I was born to be a preacher. Hallelujah. And Nana argue, argue, argue with me. Then the then president, may he rest in peace, he said, Nana, your genius brother has taken a good turn. I hope you allow him to go and do it because he will save so many souls. And my big brother said, okay, president, let him go and be a preacher. God has done so many marvelous things through his servant standing here. Amen. Amen. My brother, my sister, listen to me. There is a reward in doing God's work. Amen. And Paul, in the first Corinthians chapter 15, it has been divided into... Chapter 15, verse 1 up to 12, up to 11, it said, the subject heading is, the risen Christ, faith reality, which we see in the book of Mark 16, 9 to 20. And then the risen Christ, verse 12 up to 19, it says, the risen Christ and our hope, believers hope, Amen. And then from verse 20 up to 28, it says, the last enemy destroyed. And then from verse 29 up to 34, effects of 
denying the resurrection. And then from verse 35 up to 49, it says, the glorious body. That means not all believers will die. That doesn't mean we're not going to die. We will die. But in times of persecution, in times of trouble, God will save you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the last chapter, the last verse where we have the stability. So it should be seven rather. Our final victory is in the Lord. Verse 50 up to 57. And the last verse, Paul says, Therefore, my dear brethren, or therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, when you are in the law, stand firm. I'm going to show you something today. Let nothing move you. There's nowhere in a Christian life there won't be problems. There's, there is a problem in your Christian life when we walk with the Lord. Always give yourself fully in the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Praise the Lord. Walking absolutely. Walking in absolute hope. He's talking about the church of Corinth. Where there are so many problems in the church. Hallelujah. And then Paul was advising them, preparing them for a greater reward that is ahead of them. Amen? Amen. So, if you, have, if you have my Bible, you see that I, I write so many things in my Bible. Me, how I understand the book of Corinthians, though stability, it goes with the word hope. If you have hate, that means you have hope. Amen? And so me, I call it the people of hope. Who are the people that possesses great hope? Paul calls them my beloved brethren, referring to the church of God, the children of God, because they are people delivered by grace. Amen? That is why we see in the same chapter, verse 1 to 10. They were a people saved out of deadness, deadness, depravity, and death of their own sins by amazing grace, but by the amazing grace of God in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, they have been brought into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Have you been delivered? I think you say yes. Amen. Amen. They are destined. They are people destined for glory. As you read this chapter, you come to understand that God has some big things waiting for us today. Hallelujah. Amen. My brother, my sister, if I take you to the book of Daniel chapter 3. Therefore, my brethren... Amen. Amen. Let's read First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. One before we go to Nebuchadnezzar. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. If you are a Christian, what you need is to be firm. There are some people called Sofunkuto, Sofukoko. You can remember somebody, a pastor came from Ghana. He prepared cocoa for some people in the south. Amen? He said, be ye steadfast, unmoved. 
Hallelujah. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, as long as you stay in the Lord and doing your own work, we call something as practical ministry. Uncle has his own work to do in the Lord. Uncle has his own work to do in the Lord. Mommy has everything to do, his own, her own work in the Lord. You have it. Are you doing it? Are you faithful in the Lord? And here Paul was telling them, please be firm. Don't allow anything to persuade you. Don't move. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as a risen Lord. Amen? Amen. And so I'm taking you somewhere. When we go to the book of Daniel chapter 3, it tells us about Nebuchadnezzar went to war with the, people, the Jews. And when they defeated them, he, take, he said, take the nobles, those who are talented, artisans, and take them to Babylon for them to build a city for us, like the Russians. When you see anything big in Russia, it was done by the Jews. Amen? So, Nebuchadnezzar, king, the king made an image of God. Whose foundation are you building? That is where it's coming from. An image of God. Whose height was three scores cubits and, and the breadth of, breadth of six cubits? He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Yes. Then the king, the Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent, gathered together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, and counselors. Let all the people in my country do something. There's going to be a sounding of the trumpet. When it sounds, I want everyone to bow. Amen? Amen. Whose report are you going to believe? Whose command are you going to obey? There's a command of God and there's a command of man. Amen? Amen. When you go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, it says, I am the Lord thy God. Do not have any other God besides me, isn't it? And then when you go down, it tells the parents, say, teach your kids. So these guys we're going to talk about were aware but that God has told them not to serve any other God, isn't it? Praise the Lord. And he set them up. Brothers and sisters, before we go on, I want you to see something in the book of Exodus chapter 6. We call it the three P's. Everybody should note this down. The three P's. The three P's. P, P. The three P's. Amen? And if you're a believer, these things are in your life. Number one P is problem. Hallelujah. Number two P is promise. It's in your life. As long as you give yourself unto the Lord. Amen. And number three P is provision. And so God takes us from problems with his promise, and then he sent us to the land of flowing with milk and honey. Amen? So let's read um, Exodus chapter 6, verse 6, 7, and see what I'm trying to say. 
if you can point out the problem and the prov uh, provision. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Praise the Lord. And I will take you to me for a people. And I will be your a God. You a God. To you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under burdens of the Egyptians. Praise the Lord. And I will bring you in, in unto the land concerning which the which I did swear to you. give it to your Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob. And I'll give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so as a believer, the very day you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, these things are with you always and they are your bona fide property. Who can tell me which is the problem? Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. When an enemy set a trap for you, that is why Paul is telling the Corinthians, there will be a trap in your life. There will be a time you go to hospital and doctor will detect something. Amen? Yeah. The big C, they will tell you. You have the breast cancer. They will tell you so many things. But God is saying, under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a, with an, with a, a stretch arm and with great judgment. That is the problem. Do you see that? So every Christian, every believer, don't say that you are free. When things are going on wrong in your homes, it's just a test of the Lord. Amen? Amen? It's a test. Hey, my wife has a, a favorite Bible quotation. If you can remember me, he says, I'll take you to me. This Bible, this one is different. Do you have a, a different quotation? And I'll take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. Amen? Amen. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians? So there comes a time when a believer will be in trouble. Let me tell you something. As soon as, if this is your first time of coming here, you come through the door, at the, law, the door. I know everything from here to your door. But I'm trained. I don't give revelation just like that. That young man who didn't come, I'm really worried. Today is the day for him to know what the Lord is about to do in his life. Amen? Amen. Go and bring your daughter. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I will bring you to the land I swore with 
uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. The land flowing with milk and honey. Amen? Amen. If you are firm and unmovable with a determination, with faith and hope and confidence in the Lord, praise the Lord. These things are there for us. And these are the people when they were going out of Egypt. You know why problem stays with us? Who can tell me? Eh? No, 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 no. No. See, the type of, you see, we are doing the Israelis work. The way they came out of Egypt. The same thing a believer is doing. I know. Murmuring. And complaining. Hey, I went to hospital. Hey, pastor, you know, the doctor says, as soon as the doctor says this, tell him, hey, brother, it's not me. Praise the Lord. If you can't say it to your GP because next time he, he won't call you. When you come out of the door, Stand somewhere and say, Father, I've heard it. But whose report? Isaiah 53 says, what does it say? Verse 1. Eh? Whose report are you believing as a believer? Is it the report of a man or the report of the word? Amen? Hallelujah. And so these problems are always around us. But let me tell you, it's a test. That the scripture says, the God of all grace, who has called you into his internal glory. Amen? The God of all grace. Can you say it? Who has called you into his internal glo eternal glory after you have suffered? Can't say that word suffered a while. It's after you've been trained. Amen? Amen. That training has to come as a believer because you can't start class one and stay to form four. You need to write some test exams. Amen? Yeah. And so as soon as, oh, Bishop, Nadia, this time is no good over there. Why? I had a bad dream. Dreams are pictures of what God wants to tell you. But at times, when going to bed without proper food, you will dream. Amen? Hallelujah. At times, when you feel your belly too much, you will dream. Amen? But at times, you are just like Joseph. God is telling you your future. And so dreams to believers are pictures of what is about to come. Amen? I had a dream that I would be in London, and I had a dream that London is your stepping stone, get up and go and market my word. Praise the Lord. And so Nebuchadnezzar prepared a golden image. Amen? But mind you, the Jews... They know the Lord. They love the commandments. That father teach your kids. In your homes, let it be their parents. Hallelujah. And so these people that have been taken away to Babylon, they knew what they were about to do. Where are we? Exodus 3. Praise the Lord. Hurry up, boy. Exodus chapter 3. My friend, go there. 
Okay. Sorry, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar has prepared an image. Then the princess, the governors, and the captains, the judges, and the treasurers, the counselors, and the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that the book had Nezah, the king had set up. And they stood before the image that the book had Nezah set up. Yes, go on. Four. Then the herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded. Whose report? Whose report? Amen. All people, all nations, all languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, so so and so and so and so and so, and all kinds of music, you shall fall. You fall now and worship the golden image that the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the man in fairy furnace. Problem. If you don't fall down, you will be put into the fire. Amen? Do you can remember in the book of Isaiah 43, verse 2, what does it say? Put it there and then we come back. I want to teach you something. He said, be firm, unmovable, or how near this same cry. Mama, I will come back to that, okay? If there is trouble, remain firm in the Lord. Amen? There are certain things you don't need, pastor. Amen? You are a child of God. God loves you. It's not bishop alone, that's why uh, Jesus died on the cross. Oh. It's for all, all of us. There are certain things you don't need, pastor. You can pray. Amen? He says, when you pass through waters, I will be with thee. Do you remember what happened in the Red Sea? They came. They were trying, hey, Moses, look. At their back, the enemies were coming. On their left were the mountains. On their right was the mountain. But ahead of them was the Red Sea. Problem. And the Lord said, Moses, why are you crying to me? What is in your hand? Christ in you is the hope of your glory. Hallelujah. And so you know what happened? He says, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, that is the river Jordan, after they crossed the Red Sea, what happened? You see, the Red Sea is just a flat land. It's a valley. But when God says, come up, the seabed will do what? Will come up, isn't it? And so they walk in it. And when they cross, another problem. River Jordan was there. And so here he's saying, when you pass through waters, that the Red Sea water, I'll be with you. Hebrew says, I will never forsake you or leave you. Amen? And when you go through rivers, that River Jordan, have you experienced Jordan experience before? It's not easy. If you're a Christian, you've never gone to Jordan River, the river of God, where Naaman went, we call it the river of God. He was making Papa the Apapa River Thames. It was man-made river. Hallelujah. And Naaman said, what is this? Jordan is a river of God. Every believer should step in it. What happened? When they step in it because the pastors are there, they have 12 stones in it, the 12 government stone in it, and then they also went through. And then he said, when thou walkest through war, fire, 
He's talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You need to, you'll be there. Amen? I'm telling you, you will be there. Every believer will be in these three stages. Hallelujah. And so he says, my brethren, brothers and sisters, stand firm when there's a temptation. Be unmovable. Hallelujah. Do not move. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the wealth of the Lord because you know that your labor will never be in vain. And I told you about three P's. Program, promise, and provision. If you're a Christian and you've not gone through this, that means you, you don't know anything. Amen? Every believer will go through this. When thou passes through waters, he's talking about the Red Sea, and I told you, behind them were the enemies. On their right was a mountain. On the left was a mountain. And ahead of them was the Red Sea. Are we going to die? God will never forsake thee nor leave thee. He said, Moses, come on, stretch your hand. And Moses did. The riverbed came up and became a flat land, and they walk in it. But mind you, the devil is a fool. If you have hope, if you have faith, I'm telling you that he's a fool. Amen? Amen. They came also walking on it. Hallelujah. Whilst all the fish has run, fishes has run away, you can go there. There's a power in it. They came, and the Lord said, Moses, keep quiet. I told you, that man is defeated. The devil is defeated. We have given him chance. That's why me, I am not scared of anything. Because he that is in me is greater. Hallelujah. Amen. Something happened just last three weeks ago. I know somebody who was really ill. He called the wife, called the last child, and told her, I'm about to go. I want you to do this, do this, 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 this. But before they were taking that man to the hospital, he said, call me Bishop Okoro. I went there, and he said, oh, Bishop, see, on the corridors are the angels, but I don't see any of my family. So they are coming to take me away. And I said, look, I've told the angels to go away. You are not dying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You haven't finished your job. Say, Bishop, I'm dying. I said, you are not dying. I am going home. I've prayed for you. By the time I come tomorrow, you are, you'll be alive. Amen. I've asked them to go away. Why? Because the angels are ministering. They are our servants. They come to our aid. Praise the Lord. Don't you think you can pray to God? Why everything is on pastor? If the pastor is not there, what will you do? If the pastor is not around, what will you do? Are you going to die? Praise the Lord. These three stages, every believer will go through. Problem, promise, and provision. It's for us. The reason why we don't know, we don't study the Bible. If I ask you, each and every, where's your Bible today? Something will happen here. Because people come to church, they don't have a pen, they don't have a, a notebook, they don't have a Bible. Praise the Lord. When you come to church and the pastor preaches, don't just go and go home and go through what he said. Praise the Lord. And so the month of stability 
In the book of First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 is people of hope. We have hope in the Lord. When the king set up that golden image, three young guys said, we've been told, this is for parents, that we should serve the Lord alone. We are not going to bow down. Amen? Amen. The devil, what he does is, he always accuses us to God. People went to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. You know those Jews, they said they are not going to bow down. And according to your law, what are you doing? That's what the devil will do. He goes to God and said, oh, you see your friend Job. You see what he's doing? He said, leave him alone. God sees you wherever you are. He sees you. If you are faithful, he knows it. If you are not faithful, but if you are faithful, there is a, a reward for every believer. Hallelujah. Amen. You check the time for me, please. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the king called these three guys and said, is it true that you are not going to bow? He said, king, live forever. Even if you will kill us, we are not going to bow. He said, put them in the fire. Those who were taking, who were taking the boys, the three guys to the fire, they were the first person, people to die, isn't it? And then they put them in the fire. The king himself said, how many people do we put in the burning fire? He said three. But I see the fourth person there. Jesus is with you. Amen. I told you, our history in these churches, nobody dies. Is it true? Yes. I've seen it. Nobody will die until it's God's appointed time. Because that was my covenant with him when he calls me. And I've seen it. There's a proof. And that man has said, I've asked the angels to go away. You're not going to die. Amen? Amen. The next day, he is alive. The third day now, the man is alive. What doctors are saying, the word God is saying a different thing. And so the book of Isaiah 53 says, whose report are you going to believe? Doctors will tell you, oh, you've got cancer. So if you are scared, we say, okay, thank you very much. But when, as soon as I go out, what would I say? I don't have cancer. By his stripes, that is why I'm saying that as soon as come, me when I'm here, I'm not preaching. You know, when you come through this door, if there's anything wrong with you, I know it. But there's no need of me coming to you. I've seen this, I've seen that, 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 that. I won't do it. What is my duty as a shepherd? I pray for you. And I thank Jesus for your healing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the duty of a shepherd? Look after the sheep. Some will come filthy. What are the, I, I, I have to pick you up and put you down here so that you will live because I have a reward. Amen? Amen. That is why in the book of 15, 58, he said, your labor will never be what? In vain. You know what? They put them in the, in the burning bush. And the king himself said, is it not three people that went in there? I see the fourth person. That is Jesus, my dear brother. He's with you. Jesus is around with you and your family. Hallelujah. Let's go on. I will soon finish and do something before we close. People of hope. Who are the people that possesses this great hope? Paul called them, my beloved brethren, 
referring to the children of God because they are people delivered by grace. We've been delivered by grace. Hallelujah. There were people saved out of the deadness, depravity, and death of their own sins by the amazing grace of God, which we see in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 10. They have been brought into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Have you been saved? Yes. They are people destined for glory. As you read this chapter, I mean this chapter, don't just read verse 58 alone. That's not how we study the Bible. If you're a good Christian, a pastor will pick up subject. Don't just read the subject alone. Why is that subject? That is the more reason why you see he said, therefore, of all that I've told you, therefore, because of what I've told you, amen? amen. Be firm. Be stable. Don't move. Amen? amen? God the Father is always watching you. I read something about Hebrews 12. It says, since we are surrounded a cloud of witnesses. If God is watching me somewhere, a man standing somewhere is also watching me. Isn't it? So me, now these days, when they consecrated me as a bishop, when somebody calls me bishop, I panic. Why? I've got to watch my Ghana and Suffolk are women, Jimmy Jimmy. They are fools. They are not wise. Yet the young son, the young young man, you know. God says, never eat, add anything, and take nothing from it. He says, preach the gospel. It is given to me free. And so I also I have to give it out free. That's why miracles have been happening through me several. It's God using me to do it. It's not me. It's not by might. Not by power. But his own power. The only thing as a believer you can do is believe the word of God. And walk in it. There are some pastors who are there for money. Amen? Have I charged any of you before? I will, that, that's the last thing I will do. But if I need it, you know what I do? I stand at the corner and say, Father, mm -mm, I need this so. God will touch somebody's heart. And it will come. Because it has been given to me free. Now when I also give you the free, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. Praise the Lord. My dear brother, you have God around you. Amen? When David said, yea, though I walked, you will always grow through the valley. The valley can be your son. The valley can be your wife. The valley can be somebody around you. But all these are things are tests to see who you are. And where you are in God. So, 58 says, Beloved brethren, he was talking to the current, the Greek island. Therefore, because of all that you have from verse 1 up to 57, be ye steadfast, stay where you are in the Lord. Don't go to a young kuto. Don't go to any bosom. They can help you. Amen? Amen? You know the problem of so many believers? They think when they pray, God will never answer them. That is the problem. Why did you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Anywhere. Ask my wife. You know where I pray? I pray in the kitchen. Three weeks ago I was praying, um, sitting down on a staircase, and the Lord said to me, I could hear, he says, so many pastors are leading people into the hell. 
He is lying. Come to me. There are visions in my belly. Nothing there. A lie. What? Not really. See, let me tell you a secret. Because I've been there, I'm giving you a secret. Anytime you go to any pastor and he asks you, how can I help you? Kwanzo. <laughs> it's a secret I'm telling you. If any pastor said that thing to you, know that he's going to lie to you. Why? Because the word that is coming from you is what he's going to use to give you the answer. The right pastor who says, let's pray. Isn't it? I know, it's true. People think when you go to Bible college, you become a pastor. If you go to Bible college, that doesn't make you a pastor. It's the calling of God. Amen? Why we go to Bible college is, who has any storybook? Yeah, there's a storybook here. Let me show you. Some go to Bible college to learn how they knew me. To learn how somebody write a book about God, how to give a color. That's why some of us go to Bible college. A printer, those who print this. Amen? Some go to Bible college because they want to study the Bible. And some go to Bible college because they have the call of God on their life. They need to know the word, how to bring it across. Because when you start from the Genesis to Revelation, they are all the same. This man hasn't gone to Bible college. You were not here on Friday. When I saw him in hacking, I said, hey man, I see you riding a hawk. White horse, isn't it? Holding a, job, a, a spear. Don't you know that you are born to preach the word of God? He says, me? That time, you know, bluff. Well, me, a medical doctor, who are you to tell me this? I say, you. Wait for what God will do to you. Yesterday, he was, Friday, he was telling so many things. I said, and he refuses to pay his tithe. And I called him, so many things. Don't bring them out and let them know. I said, hey, my friend. Mind you, you earn good money while you are not paying your tithe. Say, how do you know? And I say, me, when in your house, I am there. Because I'm your shepherd. I don't sleep. I saw for you in the But good pastors won't sleep. I don't need to sleep. Always, I will leave her alone on the bed. I can walk throughout the whole night till morning. But I am born with it. Praise the Lord. So, my brothers, let us be firm. Don't move. When things go wrong, don't move. The only thing you need to do, yes, we are believers. David even asked God, why? When you ask that, 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 that does not mean you are sinning. Amen? Why me? Then God will come. Why me? I will give you the answer. Praise the Lord. I won't finish because I'm going to do something. Let me summary for you here. I'm going to ask you a question today. Where is your anchor? Hebrews 6 19. Let's read. 619. Where is your uncle? Where is it? Where is your hope in the Lord? When it comes, trouble comes, what are you doing? Amen? When trouble comes, it's good to call your pastor. But the first thing you need to do, Jesus, where are you? My Lord, where are you? Amen? Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into the 
and to die within the veil. And so we're going to find out the veil and where does our anchor go? Amen. Listen. Those who be firm, unmovable, and abound in God will be able to say, as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, like an anchor holding a ship. You know this, but you've been in there, you know. Very big one. When it comes, at times it stops somewhere. Amen. Holding a ship safely in position. Our hope in Christ guarantees us our safety. Then in the veil, our anchor in the veil is an old testament word. Where the ship anchor goes down to the ocean bed. Listen here. Are you listening to me? That anchor that is holding the ship. It goes down the bed of the sea. Amen? By your anchor. When you are fast, step fast. Your faith, your obedience, where does it go? Praise the Lord. Whereas the ship anchor goes down to the ocean bed, the Christian's anchor goes up into the heavenly sanctuary. Amen? Where is more to God himself? My anchor does not go down to the seabed. Your anchor in the name of Jesus will never be down. It will go straight to God. Hallelujah. Write this scripture down. When you go home, you pray over it. That is Leviticus 16, verse 15. Hebrews 9, 7. 1 John 3, 14. Our anchor goes straight to Jesus Christ. The shepherd of our soul. The veil was the first and the second where we call the holy of holies. It's only, we have pastors here. I am the only one in those days that can go to the Holy of Holies. When Jesus' chariot is finished, the cloth that covers that thing was torn from up. So now you have access unto God. Don't let anyone deceive you. God bless you. Come. The other time, sorry, 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 Mama. 